In this module, we will study mechanism synthesis for function generation. Before we start, let us note some fundamental facts. In a four bar mechanism, each moving pivot will always lie on a circle as the links move. For example, in the figure shown here, the moving pivot A always lies on a circle with its center at O2. The moving pivot B moves on the circle with center at O4. This geometric fact will be crucial in our development of synthesis procedures. Note that this picture does not show a double crank. Depending on the link lengths, there are some points on the circle that A or B may not reach. Let us look at our first canonical problem for design a crank rocker mechanism. This is a function generation problem in which we want to design a four bar crank rocker mechanism to obtain a rocker rotation of a given angle. We'll call this angle beta with equal time in forward and backward motion and with the crank driven by constant motor input. There are two facts that we will be using for developing the solution procedure. First, as I said before, the moving pivots will always move on circles centered about the fixed pivots. Second, for a crank rocker mechanism at the extreme positions, two moving pivots will be collinear with the fixed pivot. And if you recall, these are the same facts that we used for our graphical synthesis procedure. The logic that we will be using is same as that used for graphical synthesis procedure. As I had stated while doing graphical synthesis, in any synthesis procedure, we will make some assumptions about some variables and we will construct or solve for the other variables. In graphical synthesis, we had made assumptions of locations of some variables and we had constructed the locations of other variables geometrically. In analytical synthesis, we will assume that the locations of some of these pivots and some variables are known and we will solve for the other variables. Recall that the assumptions that we made for this rocker output motion synthesis was first that we know the location of one of the fixed pivot O4. When I say no, I mean we choose it. We choose the link length of the follower link or the output link, which is the length of the link O4B in this picture. We assume that we know the angle theta4, that is one extreme position of the follower link. Beta or the range of motion of the rocker link is given to us. And in this picture, O4B1 and O4B2 shows the two extreme positions of the output link. Our goal is to compute the fixed pivot O2, the crank and coupler lens, so that the rocker moves between O4B1 and O4B2. We know that one of the fixed pivots will lie on the line joining B1, B2. So this is what the picture shows. Note that this picture is very similar to the graphical construction picture that we had seen before. However, in this case, we are not constructing the picture graphically. This is just a sketch. We have it here so that we can define all the variables. Let L4 be the length of the follower link or the rocker. Since we know this length L4 and we know the angle theta4, we know O4B1 is L4 e to the power of j theta4. O4B1 is the vector with its root at O4 and its head at B1. Similarly, O4B2 is L4 e to the power of j theta4 plus beta. Theta4 plus beta is the angle made with the x-axis. The vector OB1 is O4 plus O4B1. The vector OB2 is O4 plus O4B2. Recall that I have assumed O4 is known. So this vector length R 
and this angle phi is known. Now B1, B2 is OB2 minus OB1. Since O2 lies on the line B1, B2, so the position vector of O2 or the equation of the line going through B1, B2 will be OB1 plus KB1, B2. We have seen this before that if we know one point on the line and the direction vector along the line, then we can get any point on the line, which is OB1 plus KB1, B2. Since I know OO4 and I know O4B1, therefore OB1 is known. Similarly, OB2 is known because I know OO4 and the vector O4B2. And B1, B2 is known because I know both OB2 and OB1. Therefore, I know OB1 as well as B1, B2. So as soon as I choose a value of K, I will get my location of the fixed pivot O2. Again, I remind you that the idea or the logic of the process is very similar to the graphical construction procedure that we did before. Now, the length of the crank, as we had seen before, is half of B1, B2. So if we know the vector B1, B2, we can get the magnitude of the vector B1, B2 and multiply by half to get the length of the crank. The length of the coupler also can be obtained through vector algebra and I will leave it to you as an exercise to compute the length of the coupler. Now up to this point, what I have shown you is an analog of the graphical synthesis procedure where we are using numbers or symbols instead of compass and um, protractors. If you recall that I had also claimed that analytical synthesis is more general than graphical synthesis. Now I want to show you that although we kind of followed the same logic and same procedure, this analytical synthesis procedure is more powerful or can do more things than the graphical synthesis procedure. To see that, let us dive into a few more details. As I said, OB1 is O04 plus O4B1. So the length of O04 is U and the angle that O04 makes with the x-axis is phi. I apologize for the change in notation. In the previous slide, I said this length is R, but that should not really matter here. So O04 equals to U e to the power of J phi. Therefore, OB1 is O4 plus O4B1 is U e to the power of J phi plus L4 e to the power of J theta 4. Recall that L4 is the length of the rocker. OB2 is similarly O4 plus O4B2, which is U e to the power of J phi plus L4 e to the power of J theta 4 plus beta. And B1B2 is OB2 minus OB1. These two terms will cancel. And we have L4 e to the power of J theta 4 plus beta minus L4 e to the power of J theta 4. Now let the length of O02 be V and let gamma be the angle that O02 makes with the x-axis. Then O02 is V to the power of J gamma and we have V to the power of J gamma equals to OB1 which is U to the power of J phi plus L4 e to the power of J theta 4 plus K times B1, B2. This is the B1, B2 term that is taken from here. If I just simplify, I take this term L4 e to the power of J theta 4 and here this L4 e to the power of J theta 4 which is pre-multiplied by K. I get 1 minus K L4 e to the power of J theta 4 and this term here K L4 e to the power of J theta 4 plus beta, I get it down here. Now these are my design equations which have been derived just based on the fact that O2 lies on B1, B2 extended, where B1 and B2 are the extreme positions of the rocker, and the rocker rotates around O4. These are the only two facts required to derive this equation. Now the first equation here was the equation that I derived in the last line, and what I want to do here is now expand using Euler's equation and equate the real and imaginary parts. I hope by now you are experts in doing this sort of maneuver. What we are using 
is e to the power of j theta equal to cos theta plus j sine theta for each one of these terms here okay and then if you just collect the terms that does do not have j and the terms that has j in them and equate the left and the right hand side these are the two scalar equations that you get now what we want to do is stare at these equations and identify what are my design unknowns so v and gamma which define the position of o2 is an unknown in general if i don't make any assumptions u and phi which defines the location of the pivot o4 is also a design variable theta 4 which defines one extreme position of the follower link or the rocker is an unknown the length of the rocker l4 is unknown and the variable k is unknown there's a typo here it should not be beta it should be k the variable k is unknown beta is given to us so you see that we have seven unknowns and two equations so we have to assume five variables to make it two equations in two unknowns that we have a hope of solving and previously what i presented to you was that we chose this u and phi or the location of o4 we chose the angle theta 4 the length of the rocker l4 and k that is we solved for o2 or v and gamma by making these choices so let us understand in terms of these equations here if you choose u phi theta 4 l4 k and beta is known you can see that the right hand side of these equations of both these equations becomes determined so you can clearly find v cos gamma and v sine gamma that means you can find v square and add the two right hand sides and take a square root you will get v and you, then you can use the eta and two function to get gamma so you can get o2 however note here that we need to know five variables it need not be the five variables that we had talked about before for example i can say that we know the position of the fixed pivot o2 and we don't know o4 o4 is our unknown this is what we have to solve for and we know theta 4 l4 and k so we are still assuming knowledge of five variables or we are choosing five variables and we are solving for the location of o4 why is that possible it is possible because you can see that knowing v and gamma gives me the left hand side of these equations here knowing theta 4 l4 and k gives me these two terms so i can take the terms to the other side here and then i will have u cos phi is some known thing a and u sine phi is some other known value b and so from here i can obtain u and i can obtain phi the takeaway message here is that once i have the design equations even though the design equations may be underdetermined or there may be more variables than the number of equations i can use the same design equations to solve different variations of the same design problem for example in this case we saw that for situations where it is reasonable to assume that the fixed pivot o4 is known can be solved by these design equations alternatively situations for which we can assume that the fixed pivot o2 is known and o4 has to be computed can also be solved by using the same design equations this aspect that the same design equations can be used for solving many variations of the design problem which can be application dependent will be reinforced further in the later modules